Welcome back to Red Pill Game Reviews. My name is Ian Crow. The video gaming community must resist the feminist destroyers of gaming. That phrase is a mouthful to say, so please permit me the shortening of this into an acronym. Henceforth, Femdog. The term Femdog is not used as a mere pejorative. It is fully descriptive of feminist goals in their quest to bring changes to how video games are developed. These feminists are not protesting industry-wide barriers to women finding employment in development studios. No such barriers exist. These feminists are also not protesting publishers' refusal to allow women to write stories for games that will be played in the vast majority by men. And the most important and most relevant thing these feminists are not doing is creating enjoyable gaming experiences. What these feminists are indeed doing is deconstructing the acts of creation that talented men and women have designed, in most cases with the enjoyment of gamers being their highest purpose. Is the enjoyment of people who play video games what feminist destroyers seek to enhance in their quest for changing gaming? Do they even claim that bringing depictions of women fully in line with feminist theory will make games more fun for us all? Their methods belie any such claims, if a feminist destroyer has even tried to say that it would make gaming more fun. Very few feminist games have been developed, and all can surely imagine how well they have entertained gamers. No, a destroyer's method is to pick and prod and cast aspersions upon the masterworks of others. In 1996, the Valve Corporation had an idea. They believed that first-person shooters could have an engrossing narrative that was told during the course of gameplay. It was their opinion that this could bring more immersion and enjoyment to players. So, what did they do? Did they spend a whole lot of time criticizing id Software for dooming Quake's bizarre and barely there storylines? No. They wasted little time with social manipulation, attempting to get others to bring their vision into reality. They built their own vision and then submitted it for the approval of the most important people in the games industry, those who enjoy playing video games. It turned out that Valve's beliefs were true, and the mark of the Half-Life series endures in the first-person shooter genre to this day, including the subject of the first Red Pill review, Metro Last Light. This is the behavior of creators. And it is because of creators that video gaming is a fantastic and thriving hobby. Valve led by showing that their ideas work, and as a result, the gaming industry shifted. Many other developers tried to match Valve's success with integrating the story very well into the gameplay. Gamers should demand exactly this type of proof for all claims made by feminists as to how the gaming industry should change. You will constantly and continually see feminists claim to be acting in the name of womankind, as they are seeking to subliminally associate themselves with the fondness we feel for the women in our lives. Feminists can rarely be observed saying that they speak for their own personal tastes and desires. No, it's always some selfless, grand, epic quest to bring justice to half of the human species. This is enough of a terrible hoax. But such is their arrogance that now some believe they can assert ownership over and speak on behalf of virtual women. Of course, the term virtual women is never used, again, to fool the uncritical into assuming, without it having first been proven, that what goes on with virtual women in video games has anything whatever to do with real live women. Just as killing thousands of virtual males has no impact upon most people's beliefs or actions regarding real-world violence, so too can we expect the same for anything that happens to virtual females. Anyone claiming otherwise needs to demonstrate this before we gamers spend a single second listening to their grievances. Anti-misogyny activists are not going to like this because they are used to the privilege of always being taken seriously when they string together the words hate and women into a sentence. But stand your ground and demand the proof. If it is true that there is no connection between negative portrayals of virtual women and negative attitudes towards real live women, then none of the feminist destroyer's analysis and deconstruction matters one whit. Unless for some reason you get entertainment value from hearing it. Claims of misogyny within video games that cannot be linked to real live women 
should be called exactly what these claims are referring to, which is hatred of virtual women. Virtual misogyny. Hmm. The moral imperative to care suddenly loses all steam when put in those terms. Do not let them get away with calling negative portrayals of virtual females misogyny, unqualified and not delimited with the fact that the women in question do not even exist. Virtual misogyny is the highest term such negative portrayals could possibly rise to. Virtual misogyny, while certainly unfortunate for those virtual women who have become virtual victims of it, is not something anybody involved in the video game hobby needs to really be concerned about. There are so many more pressing matters for us to discuss and debate, such as the fact that gaming on PC is superior to gaming on consoles in damn near every single way. Have at it, fellas. My name is Incro. Thank you for once again watching Red Pill Game Reviews.